Hey guys, welcome back to Gideon Stuff, and today we have a disassembly video. We're going to be taking apart the Artisan Cutlery Ahab. I almost called it CGRB. But, first of all, a big thank you to uh, Mike over at Sharpen Blade for sending this my way. Um... I really appreciate it. And also thank you to Corey over at Stafford's EDC for mailing this to me. So both of them are the reason that we're seeing this on the channel. Very interesting uh, knife. So, we're going to be taking it apart because, if we look at it, the centering is do wack a doo and the blade play is substantial. So, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, this is a knife that uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if a lot of you remember the video that Mike and I did together, um, where we went over CJRB and Artisan Cutlery uh, releases for this year. But this was one that both of us were pretty impressed with, and I, actually, I think pretty much everyone who's seen this knife has been decently impressed. Okay, so I'm guessing we're gonna need a T6 and a T8. Let's go ahead and see what the hardware is. Very interesting thing about this. Um, most of the structural hardware, I guess you could say, is hidden under the scale. So is this a T6? It is indeed. Kind of wish those were T8s, but that's okay. So the Artisan Cutlery Ahab, named after the uh, character from Moby Dick, Captain Ahab, who is hunting the white wire. You know... I actually remember reading that book a long, long time ago. I was in fifth grade. Um, I've always been a... <laughs> I've always been kind of a top of my class kind of, uh, kind of guy and always been an avid reader. Very nice. Milling on these wood scales. Very nice. Um, oh, and look at that skeletonization. Supposed to, I guess it looks like a fish. Uh, this is designed by um, Niche Designs, I believe. I'll double check that. But really, really cool. Yeah, look at that. See if it still works with the scales off. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm guessing these are going to be T6s back here. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get those out. But yeah, in a... In fifth grade, I was. Hmm, I'm gonna grab my other T6. This one's probably a little stripped out. I was. Uh, my school was doing the AR reading program, and I had this friend, and he and I, we were both kind of competitors at school, and so we were gonna see who could read the most books, get the most points. And it pretty soon became apparent that the books are worth the most point. For those of, you, those of you who don't know, the AR system was basically you'd read these books and then you take a quiz on them. And uh, I'm going to keep those screws separate because I think they're unique to where they go. And uh, anyways, depending on how good you did on the quiz, you got, you know, different points. Oh, is that screw free spinning? Hmm. A big fan of that. We might have to take apart the other side. I think we're going to have to, except we have to take off the pocket clip to get to that one screw under there. So why is this free spinning? Hmm, that's not good. Anyways, so we read, a, I decided that, um, you know, reading classics was a way to win this competition between he and I because they were worth a lot of points, and this is a T8 here. And so I started reading a bunch of classics, Gone with the Wind and Lord of the Rings and all kinds of stuff. And Moby Dick was absolute torture for me. <laughs> it was the worst book I'd ever read, and I haven't read it since. Maybe I should. Maybe I'll have a new appreciation for it. I don't know. But uh, I felt like the whole story, like the actual story part of it, could have been told in like 100 pages. But instead he dedicated like a lot of pages to uh, 
the processes of whaling. So that was kind of interesting. Okay, I do think I might have to take off this side in order to get the pivot out. And there's a screw that holds in the pocket clip. I have to take out this screw and it is, mm, I can't get to the other side. So it's free spinning and I can't get to the other side to hold it shut. Free spinning and perhaps a little stripped. That's no way no. Okay, so I used some uh, black magic and alchemy to get the uh, pocket clip off. Kind of went in there uh, a ways. Really nice pocket clip, actually. I love the, I love that area there. Very cool titanium clip. I like it a lot. Let's put it over there. And now we can get to this other side and take the other scales off. Anyways, the end of the AR story, I actually did end up winning. And uh, I, the, I, I actually had the uh, highest number of AR points of uh, any kid in the state that year. And so I got a $20 Walmart gift card. Which, of course, you know, 11-year-old me was happy with. It's a very lightweight knife. But anyways, I was uh, much more mature back then than I am now. Kind of interesting as a more mature 11-year-old than I am as a, you know, double that age now. <laughs> age backwards. Okay, yeah, this is bad. So let's see there. It's Both those screws are spinning. Let's go ahead and stick this in a clamp or something. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm going to be honest. I am not enjoying the... <laughs> disassembly of this knife and see now that one's free spin look at that that one was free spinning i got that screw out this one won't come out now oh wait they just push apart like that there's a little tiny lanyard pin okay sorry about that guys we got cut off but look at this look at how tiny these screws are and ignore my disgusting nails focus don't focus on the, the, those pieces Look how tiny those screws are. That's, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I mean, we finally got it apart. This thing would not come off of there. I'll have to, I, I mean, maybe I'll get some like pliers and hold that in place. I don't know, we'll see. But let's go ahead and start cleaning this off. Anyways, as I was saying, yeah, I was quite the, quite the mature fifth grader and I've seemed to have matured backwards. Although I will say I do remember as a uh, <laughs> as a fifth grader, I remember um, I was kind of a nerdy guy, and uh, heck, I am still a nerdy guy. I'm a, I'm a grown adult who <laughs> buys dinosaur toys to put on my shelves. But um, you know, I was a pretty nerdy guy, and uh, you know, obviously, I had my fair share of bullies. So I remember one time, um, I was on the bus, and I was reading Moby Dick, and there was this bully that rode my bus, and I was a fifth grader, and he was a seventh grader, and he, uh, I'm going to see if I can tie down this screw. Anyways, he came up, he saw me reading Moby Dick, and, you know, started making jokes about, you know, dicks and stuff, and he's like, what are you doing, reading a book about dicks? <laughs> And so I turned to him and I said, uh, yes, Latin, uh, Moby is Latin for small. This book is called Small Dicks. I'm researching your kind. And uh, <laughs> I must say that was one of, my, one of my best singers as an 11-year-old. Okay, so got those tightened down a little bit. There's a little titanium backspacer. It's kind of cool. I like the jimping on there. Let's clean off this blade. It's AR RPM 9. You guys know I love that steel. Pretty fingerprinty. Let's just... This cloth actually needs to be thrown in the wash, but it's the first one I grabbed, so it's the one we're going to use. If it turns out to be a disaster, I'll go grab a different one. I've got so many of these cloths lying around, I should, I don't know, start doing something productive with them, like making Indiana Jones-style torches or, or something. I don't know. Okay, wipe that off. What's that little blemish there? A little piece of tape residue. Okay. There we go. 
All right, now time for the reassembly process. Actually, let's clean these bearings up. There, are, there is so much hardware for this knife. Um, it's everywhere. You may notice a little whale I have up there in the right-hand corner. You know, because Moby Dick was a whale. However, Moby Dick was a was a sperm whale, a toothed whale. This is a say whale, which is a baleen whale. Uh, I, I, I've, I've, as you guys know, I'm studying paleontology. And uh, my interest uh, in paleontology, as far as animals go, and things I want to, diver to you know devote my time to studying, include uh, pterosaurs. I love pterosaurs, uh, ceratopsians, and uh, celurosaurs. But there's two other groups of animals that I am very interested in in terms of their evolution and uh, biology, physiology, and that is elephants and whales. Um, I'm not big into uh, prehistoric mammals or things, but elephants and whales, I could uh, I could sit down and study all day. Absolutely love everything about them. Okay, so there we we're going to go ahead and I think we're going to put this side back together real quick. Let's start with the pocket clip. See if I remember which screw is the right one for the pocket clip. Put it over here. There it is. Now, taking apart knives is always a little bit stressful, but it's, like, more stressful when it's, you know, someone else's knife. Especially when it's, like, a friend's knife, you know. If this was a knife of someone I didn't like, I'd be like, yeah, what the heck, you know. I'll, might as well just throw it in a dumpster fire. But since it's Mike's knife and, you know, I kind of, oh, wait, I just did a dumb, dumb thing. Look, I screwed that in without putting the pivot through. <laughs> Maybe I was also a lot smarter when I was in fifth grade. You know, straight A student. And nowadays, I can't even put a knife back together without making a stupid mistake. <sighs> Sounds about right. Alrighty. You know, I'm not Nick Shabazz, so I'm not going to try and think up a interesting narrative <laughs> through the entire disassembly of this video. So you know what? I'm going to pause this, put this knife back together, and then we'll be back. Okay, I lied. i got to say something real quick. Um, also, lock stick and uh, KPL is what we're going to be using to put this thing back together. I do actually like this little system here because it's a D-shaped pivot. But then once you have the pivot in, it's held in place by the scale and also that D-shape. So it's like not going anywhere. And that, that actually makes reassembly very easy. I, I like that. Okay, back to pausing. Okay, another interruption. Something I always appreciate is knives that have areas cut out for the bearings. Um, that makes lubricating them a lot easier instead of, you know, knives where the bearings just kind of sit against the scales and the knife like washers. Um, I don't think a lot of companies do that anymore, but I definitely prefer seeing this. Uh, it's always something that, to me, speaks, um, you know, to being well made. Guys, I am not very smart at all. I'm, I'm an idiot. Oh, jeez. I've got to put that screw in. Gosh. Oh, guys. Oh. You know, this semester at school, I'm going to be taking advanced physics, calculus, and geochemistry. And, um, you know, the uh, my performance here is not speaking very highly about my abilities as a scientist, is it? You know, maybe I am like Nick Shabazz in the sense that I am not a brilliant man. I'm nothing like Nick Shabazz. He is a legend and I am a dweeb. Alrighty, guys. Whew, getting dark out there. Okay, so, got it back together. Finally. Um, let's go ahead and give a little bit of a first impressions on this knife. Uh... Yes, I had to use pliers to get that free-spinning screw. Oh, I hate free-spinning screws more than anything. Okay, especially when they're stuck in a barrel. So now the action is good. We have no blade play. Centering is pretty much spot on. Something's rattling. What on earth? Hmm, 
might be the pocket clip screw. Oh, I don't want to take this apart again. <laughs> yeah, it is a pocket clip. <sighs> be right back. Okay, I fixed the pocket clip issue, and then I was shaking the knife to make sure there's nothing else rattling, and the little lanyard pin just went flying across creation. So let's stick that back in, and let's get this knife back together once and for frickin' all. So, Mike, this is your knife, and it's going to you when I'm done with it here in New Mexico. Um, in order to make this assembly easier for you, uh, what I did was I loctited the screws on the pocket clip side, the ones that go through this backspacer, and I left the ones on this side unloctited. So, hopefully, and I tested it out a little bit, hopefully those will uh, be a little bit easier for you. Oops, bumped the camera. Still a little bit of a rattle from that pin, but not bad. Okay. Everything else stay good? All right, first impressions on the knife itself. Uh, very comfortable. This is, might be the most comfortable knife I've reviewed this year so far. Love the ergonomics up here, up here. Very unique looking knife. Very, very fingerprinty blade. So uh, when I send this back to Mike, um, there's probably gonna be my fingerprints all over it. And knowing him, he'll probably, he'll probably use those to frame me for some nefarious crime. Um, Really unique looking knife. I appreciate that a lot. Uh, liner lock. Lockup is good. Everything's solid. Okay. Yeah. Um, very comfortable. The disassembly was not fun. <laughs> it was not fun. It was overly complicated. And maybe I'm just a dum-dum, but uh, it was not the most enjoyable activity I've ever engaged in. But uh, as for the knife itself, I like this jimping down here. Um, I like the, the pocket clips, not a big annoyance in the hand. Uh, I'm looking forward to testing this out, using it a little bit. This only came in yesterday. So, yeah. It sounds like there's a little bit of grit there on the pivot. Maybe not. Maybe it'll wear out. But, uh, yeah, there we go. First impressions on the Arson Cutlery Ahab. Okay, it's that little stop pin back there. So, again, this only came in yesterday. Whoops. Oh, the fridge turned on. This only came in yesterday. So I haven't, I haven't carried it or anything yet. I haven't really messed with it, but... I don't know. I can't remember that if it had that rattle or not. I will text Corey and ask him. Thumb studs are interesting. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to using this knife. Right now, I am exhausted. And so I am going to go ahead and call it a night. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I've been Gideon. And I will see you in the next video. Argh, mateys!